Okay, so here we go. Um, today I, I already introduced you uh, to the idea of the modes and the basics behind it, uh, behind the modes. Uh, in my video, the three different systems, the three systems. Um, one of those systems, of course, being the Greek modes. Now, um, what I want to start with talking about first, well, first I want to just kind of very quickly encapsulate the idea of the modes. Let's say there was no such thing as all the other keys, and there's only just one key, and that's the key of C. Let's just say that. Well, within that C scale, you can find seven different scales. So I can go Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, or Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Re, which has a distinctly minor sound compared to the, um, to the major sound of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Uh, the third mode uh, is uh, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Re, and again a minor sound. Uh, and so on and so forth. You can build seven different scale structures from one key, okay? And bear in mind that um, these structures depend on, in order for, for them, for you to properly use these structures, you have to establish a root on that note. Now, I want to talk about root. This is, uh, in my book, I call it uh, a heading called The Mystery of Root. And indeed, it, root is a mystery. Um, let me see, uh, I'll, t I'll start by telling you a story. I had this 19-year-old student, really remarkable guy, um, well advanced beyond his age, and uh, was a bit of a psychedelic pioneer. He took lots of LSD in his, uh, in his years, and uh, so he was a little quirky too. But um, he, he liked my playing, and he wanted to learn uh, music theory from me. Well, I soon discovered that he had something going on in his brain where he could not distinguish a root. Now you'd think that might not be such a horrible state of affairs, but actually when it comes to music theory, I'm telling you right now, all of music theory is based on one idea and one idea alone, and that is the idea of root. And if you don't get root, there's no way you can understand music theory whatsoever. So what is root? Let's liken it to gravity. If uh, you happen to be in a spaceship traveling somewhere near Jupiter, it has such an intense gravity well, being such a big planet, that it will start to pull you in. Uh, if you are flying your spaceship around one of Jupiter's moons, uh, perhaps that moon doesn't have the gravitational strength to pull you in, and so it is with the modes. Some of them have strong gravitational strength, some of them do not. Some of them are weak, and I'm going to list that in a chart called the relative strengths of the modes. And knowing this is actually knowing the different strengths and the root power of the different modes is actually quite helpful and valuable. Um, now, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm going to do a separate video for the modes related to guitar because it gets very involved, and I don't want to spend too much time on that for uh, musicians who don't play the guitar. Um, but let me tell you about this 19-year-old student and why it was impossible for me to teach him music theory. I was teaching him something called secondary dominant chords, for example. And I won't go into that, but let's just say I'm in the key of C, and I, I could go to a D minor chord in the key of C. That comes directly from the key of C. But from outside of the key, I can uh, choose a dominant seventh chord, which will resolve to that D minor, that A7 will not belong to the key of D minor. So here's the C chord, the D minor chord. I want to attach an intervening chord in between. And you could hear how it wants to go there. Well, he couldn't hear that that wanted to go there. How could I possibly teach him the seven different modes if he couldn't hear the roots? It, it didn't matter what mode I played for him. It all sounded like just a bunch of notes that have no root. And interestingly enough, um, and it makes sense, he was more into atonal music, music, rootless music, which is basically what atonal music is. And um, he brought over a CD of this guitar player that he really admired. And basically it was a bunch of random atonal notes that made no musical sense with an occasional out-of-context blues lick, which I don't know why he threw them in there, but whatever. Uh, 
and there was no root. You could not relax anywhere. It didn't settle down anywhere, and that's what root is. Root is like a home where you settle down to. Uh, so this guy could not hear this. Uh, so basically I, I was faced with a dilemma. There was no way I could teach him music theory, and I told him that. I said, if you can't hear root, I can't teach you this stuff. I mean, I could teach you the technicalities of building chords and what a Greek mode is on paper and even on an instrument, but you won't hear the difference, and that's kind of problematic. Um, he since went off to music school, and I'm really curious how he fared with all that. He was a really smart guy, so, uh, you know, be interesting to see where he went with it. All right, so uh, that's the mystery of Root. Now I'm going to do a little dramatic demo here. And um, what I'm going to do is play the same exact chord progression two times in a row, all right? But I'm going to change the root for you, and I have to do it in a kind of psychological way, which I'll explain in a second. The chord progression is C, D minor, F, and G. Now bear in mind, all four of these chords come from, the, they arise from the key of C, nothing spectacular about it. And I'll give it a little rhythm. Now you hear this C root, it feels like home, right? If I travel around, you feel like that's where you can settle down. So now I'm going to do this chord progression, C, D minor, F, G. And I hope you can hear that resolution. If you can't, go talk to that ex-student of mine. All right, now what I'm going to do is I have to, again, cleanse our palate from what we've just heard because the, the let me see if I can explain this, the root C within the key of C is so strong and so powerful that when you hear a C chord come in, you might still be feeling that that's the root. So I have to like abstract our uh, musical palette to a completely different key and then root on this, uh, what I'm gonna do next is root on a D minor chord. So. That should throw your ears off enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to root on that second chord of the progression. Remember the progression was C, D minor, F, G. But I'm going to convince your brain that this is home. Now I'm going to play the same progression. done the same way, two times in a row, same rhythms and everything, but now D minor is our root. If I want to bring us back, and there's our strong C root, now you can hear All right, and to bring the other one back, So what was it that made you feel like one chord was home and then later on another chord was home? Well, there's some function in the brain that, that kind of says if you linger on a note or a chord long enough, especially coming from empty space where there's been no sound, your brain will be immediately drawn to that note as the root. Okay. Now, the other thing you need to understand is what has more power and strength? One single note alone or three notes together, and you guessed it right, three notes together. If one guy got in a street fight with three guys, those three guys would have a better chance of beating the guy up. So the idea here is that there's power in numbers. When you create what's called a triad, a basic chord, and we'll be dealing that uh, with that in the next section called harmony in the Greek modes. Right now we're not discussing harmony, we're just discussing a linear aspect of the scales. Um, but Actually, maybe at this point it might be good to do a good uh, demo. Now, I didn't mean to get into guitar stuff, but basically on the guitar, there are seven placements on the instrument for the seven different modes. Um, I'll 
I'll get to that later because there's something, there's a saying I have that all modes are one mode and I can't easily elaborate on it right now without you listening to it. And I'd rather stay away from too much guitar stuff except if it's for just sonic demonstration purposes and not for guitar technique necessarily. Like I said, I'll deal with the technique and stuff like that in the supplementary video, uh, the modes, the Greek modes for guitar. Um, but I want to really give you an idea, maybe I can give you an idea of what I mean by all seven modes are one mode. How all seven modes become one mode is by virtue of the chord that is rooting itself on that step of the mode. So in other words, I have seven steps in the key of C, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. And if you know anything about music and scales, you could build a chord on any one of those seven steps. The first chord is C major. Uh, on the Re, that's Do. On Re, uh, you get D minor. On Mi, you get E minor. On Fa, you get F major. On Sol, you get G major. On La, and La, you get A minor. And I, uh, the diminished chord is parathetical. I'll explain why I have a saying that there are only six chords in a key and not seven. I'll explain that in the future. Academics will give me hell for this, and I really don't care because I know I'm right. But in any case, um, all right, uh, what I want to do is just, and this isn't for the sake of guitarists, this is just for the sake of sound. I want to show you on the guitar what it's like to play the seven modes. This is the Ionian mode, now I'm in the key of G this time, and you hear the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. All right, now I'm going to move over to Re and build the scale for that. mode than me, then uh, fa, this is the Lydian mode, then the Mixolydian mode on, on uh, soul, very important mode by the way, and finally I'm going to stop at uh, the Aeolian mode on, on uh, oh did I say, Mixolydian soul, this is la. I'm going to, uh, all right, we're in G, so I'm going to show you first the six chords of G, and that's G, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor. Now, what I told you was it's the chord that creates the mode. A lot of people like to think the modes are scales, and yes, indeed they are, but you cannot separate harmony, the, a concept of harmony, from the concept of scales. Um, you know, the, the analogy I like to give is, is uh, you can't separate harmony and scales. They're too synergistically related. And that reminds me of the three dimensions. And I always get a kick out of this. I remember as a kid I thought about this. You know, we talk about three dimensions. My belief is that the three dimensions um, cannot exist. Wait, how, how do I put this? You, you can't take one of the dimensions out of the three. Like, say, for example, two dimensions. I say that's not possible, all right? The reason why I say that is how small do you make something before it loses height and depth? How thin do you make something that it has no more depth? Well, there's the width and height and depth of an atom. It exists. In fact, I speculated the only phenomenon I know of that's two-dimensional and stands on, on its own would be a shadow. And why, do I, why not light? Well, light consists of photons, and a photon would have depth, width, and uh, breadth. So uh, that doesn't count, but the absence of light may, be, may account for what we call two-dimensional, all right? Uh, so maybe there's a shadow world out there where shadow beings live that are two-dimensional beings. Who knows? But my point is it's, it's virtually impossible to separate harmony and scales. They both belong together. And since scales consist of consecutive time-based units of notes, meaning one comes after another after another, where a chord plays a set of notes simultaneously, it has more strength. Now my point is this, whatever step of the scale you make, you root a chord on, you have created that mode. So for example, here's the six chords of the key of G. If I root on step six, Feel that as root, you could feel 
is wanting to go home to that. I could root on two. And you could hear it. I can root on five. So it is these chords that uh, create the mode, okay, when you root on one of these chords. Now what I'm going to tell you is all that array of, of modes that I played across the neck, when, when, now let's take it step by step and think of this. I'm in the key of G this time, okay, there are six chords in the key of G, right, and I showed you at least six of the mode shapes going up the neck, right. Now you would think that this scale... sound different than this scale, right? But when the chords come in, all seven of these modes become the mode that that chord progression dictates. So, all right, what I'm going to do is I have my looper set up here, and so I could uh, accompany myself. So I'm going to set up a Dorian mode that's Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. Dorian is built on Re. This is the chord. Uh, that is built on Re of the key of G, A minor. I'm just going to build a simple uh, rock progression. So here we go. All right, so my looper, my looper gets it. It has the loop. Now, I'm going to bring our ears back to G major. Now, this is... G chord is. Now I'm going to play my progression and I'm going to play the same exact scale I just played and I guarantee you it will not act as Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. It will act as Re, Mi, Fa, fa Sol, La, Ti, Do, Re. And notice my, my root note will no longer be this G, the first note of the scale. It will be this A, the second note of the scale. Yet I'm going to be playing the G Ionian mode, not the A Dorian mode. All right. So, uh, and I know you don't have these names memorized. Um, you can find it anywhere on the net, you know. They're just fancy names for some of musical phenomenon. That's all it is. But let me play this progression now. And... All right, now. I'm going to play Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. that the Dorian mode will fit in, just a quick demo. Now what I'm going to do is play the third mode of the key, the Phrygian mode, and it'll sound exactly the same. something stupid and included uh, all right I'm gonna have to do this loop over pardon me okay now it's got it all right are you hearing this I played the G Ionian mode against an A Dorian progression a now let's slow down a bit so if I root on the first chord of, of the key of G, which is a G chord, that's called the Ionian mode. If I root on the A minor chord, which is a second chord of, of the key of G, and based on step Re, or the second step of the scale, all right, um, that's called the Dorian mode. If I, uh, if I go to the three chord, it's B minor, and that's called the Phrygian mode. If I go to the fourth chord, it's C major, it's called the Lydian mode. The five chord is called the Mixolydian mode, and the six chord is called the Aeolian mode. All right, now, I just played you Ionian, Dorian, and uh, Phrygian. I'll do it again real quick so you can hear it. Ionian. <laughs>
those scales sounded exactly the same. There was no dis uh, difference except for a couple of clams I hit. All right, now um, I'm going to prove to you all modes are one mode. Now I'm going to do a different progression. I'll do a G Ionian progression. And G Ionian meaning the first chord of the key rooting to that. Uh, as the chords go around, they want to come home to G. So let's just do a simple. establish the G chord at this step of the Ionian scale. So you see, it's a lot of people think too much about the scales of the modes rather than the chords that are generated from a key which indeed create the modes, okay? Um, one another, I'll do the Aeolian mode. And uh, this progression is very common in rock, you've uh, heard all on the watchtower. Or the middle section to a different key, of course, but uh, the middle section to uh, "Stairway to Heaven," where the lead guitar solo is. Okay, that's the Aeolian mode. Now I'm going to lay down a, a progression using E minor as root, and then including C and D, all from the key of G. And here I go. Um, You've got that in your mind, and you can hear that root now. Now, we should be able to hear Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do in that, or Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, Re as separate roots, but they're not. You're, everything now, we have an E minor chord, is going to root to the E by nature of the power of the chord pulling the root to it. Okay? Now, again, I'm going to go through all the moments, and you're going to hear that they're all going to sound the same because they are. They are all suddenly the Aeolian mode because we've established an Aeolian chord progression. And here we go. Notice that E note, root. Now here's Ionian. musician you have to be able to establish your root all right your root chord and that will dictate the mode but you have to do it through analysis of the other chords that progress through 
Now, why would that be? Because E minor doesn't only exist in the key of G. It could act as the second step of the key of D, which would make it Dorian then, all right? So you have to look at the chords surrounding the root chord to determine what key are these chords from, and I'm going to give you devices for recognizing that. Secondly, as I've said, and there's a reason for this, 80% of music theory is absolutely true except for the 20% that negates it, okay? Now why would there be a negation? Because we're using three different systems at once, okay? Uh, if I look at this through the eyes of the major minor key system, I'll come up with different conclusions about uh, why and what and how. And generally from that lens, it's uh, the why and what and how is unnecessarily bureaucratic and wrong because it's not coming from the right system of analysis to begin with, which should come from the Greek modes, not the blues, not the major minor key system. All right, so I hope you're getting an idea of this. All modes become one mode. It's the root that has the pulling power. And uh, you know what? I, I think I'm going to just kind of leave it here, and I'll continue uh, further studies of the modes down the line, because there's a lot to talk about here. I said we're climbing Everest. This is... Uh, Step one on the climb. Good luck to all of us, and I hope we make it to the top and look at the beautiful valley below. All right, see you guys later. Be well.